Welcome to the Elementor Pro. My name is Jared, and today we're going to talk about Elementor, the free version, versus what you get with Pro. Now, there is a ton that you get with Pro, and we're looking at Elementor, the Elementor Pro website with Elementor Pro turned off. And so if you've watched any of our other videos, you've seen that, you know, there's a custom header and a footer, and there's more to it than what you see right here. And so I deactivated Elementor Pro, and now we're looking at what we get with just the free version of Elementor. So with the free version of Elementor, you get the ability to use the basic and the general Elementor widgets on a page. But that's really all that you get. You get the ability to create pages and use Elementor on pages, which is great. There is actually a lot that you can do there, but you can't use Elementor to build custom headers and footers. And there's a lot of other tools that you get with Pro that comes along with that as well. So as you can see on this uh, page here that is an empty page, we're just seeing the default themes header and footer, which is not much because I use a very basic, uh, basic theme that just gives me what I need for a theme, and that's it. It isn't anything fancy. So um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on Elementor Pro really quick just so that my website comes back alive because I, de I definitely made some issues happen by turning off Elementor Pro. So I'm going to re-enable Elementor Pro and then we're going to look in that, uh, in that page and look at all the different options that we get. So let's go back to Elementor Pro and we have our header and our footer back. So as you can see here, I have the ability now that I re-enabled Elementor Pro to go and create my own custom headers and footers. And what's nice about those is that you can create them and make them site-wide, so they're global, but you can also create custom headers and footers for uh, specific pages. So if you have a separate area of your website and you want a different menu or you want to change the logo or you want to make the header look different or the footer look different, you can assign that to only display on certain pages, which is a great feature, uh, especially if you do stuff with like landing pages and stuff like that. So now that my site is back together, we do have the basic Elementor uh, items that are available to us. We can add intersections, headings, images, text editor, video button, divider, spacer, Google Maps, and icon. Those are basic items and they're available for free without paying for Elementor. And most of the time I am using header, image, text editor, video, and buttons. Those are items that are free. You don't have to pay for Elementor. So if you have a theme already on your website and you're just wanting to use Elementor for building out the pages in between what your, your website's header and footer, which are already set because of the theme that you have, then maybe you don't need Elementor Pro. These items are probably gonna get you through most of what you wanna do. Nothing changes out here. We can still build sections with columns and organize our page out how we want. We can do things like set our padding and our margin and create sections that look really good for those elements that we're putting into them. That's all stuff that you can do with free. But some of the things that you get with Pro, which usually will be grayed out, it'll show you the items that you get, but if you don't have Pro, then you're not able to use them, is the ability to create a dynamic post display. If you have posts content on your WordPress site and you wanna display those posts, or if you wanna create a portfolio or a gallery or something like that. For example, if I go to uh, one of my websites, Hill Media, I am utilizing that gallery to have portfolio display. And so I come in here, I've got all these different sections. People can come in here and click and view those different sections and view the images. And so it's a nice way to display a portfolio. This is something that comes with Elementor Pro. Uh, you know, we have the ability to add a big slider. Uh, those are super useful on my homepage here. If I go back to the homepage of my website, I have a big image area here up top and you can toggle through or you can just wait for it to automatically toggle through and you can view all of those images. And so this is an, an element that is part of Elementor Pro. Uh, the ability to add nav menus, the default nav menu that you would be able to get is very, is very minimal. 
you would have to actually use uh, the default WordPress nav menu option and that doesn't have any customization features so being able to use the pro nav menu and customize the look and feel and style of your nav menu which without pro you wouldn't even be able to use in the header footer section anyways um, so you know there's there's that there's the ability to create an image with hotspots on it. So if you have an image and you want to outline different things in the image, you can create hotspots. And when they mouse over those hotspots, it shows additional information. You've probably seen that on like interior design or uh, companies' websites that have those beautiful displayed images with all their products in the background and you can mouse over them and see that. Pricing tables are huge. Media carousels, I use media carousels on, um, on this website for Jake's Nut Roasters. There's a, a media carousel right here. Um, I set it up that way because I've been toying around with different image sizes and whether or not I want to display all of their products or have the ability to toggle through them. And so there's uh, lots of different ways that you can use carousels. Testimonial carousels are great. If you're a business that has services or even products, having a testimonial carousel is great and this is a nice way of displaying that or reviews if you're something like a restaurant or you have product reviews that you want to display. Um, there's lots of better options. There's lots more options for share buttons, uh, social media related stuff, um, and the ability to, um, to embed PayPal buttons and video playlists and stuff like that as well. Um, but besides Pro, we also have these general items down here, which are all pretty great. You know, up top we have the basics, and then down here we have the general items. And there's a lot available in the general items, uh, such as image boxes that uh, allow you to display an image, that bring in a heading and a text uh, section as well. Those are great. Uh, I utilize those quite often, especially on businesses services pages where I have an image, I've got the service name and a brief description of the service underneath it. Icon lists are another great way to display lists rather than just using a text editor and using a bullet point. This is much better because I can actually assign specific icons and there's a huge icon library that I can choose from and uh, apply different icons and create my list that way. This is a great way to showcase a list underneath a description or something else like that. General really does have a lot of neat options like uh, being able to create a tabbed section where there's information and you click through those different tabs. Let's just look at that really quick. So a tab and then a tab two and then we can add additional tabs and people can click through the tabs to gather that information. That saves from pages being extremely long and it makes it easy for people to get information without having to scroll and go all over the page searching for that information. The free version of Elementor also even gives you the HTML widget, which allows you to paste in embed code for other things. So if you have a form or a, a subscribe form or something like that that you built outside of Elementor utilizing a different tool, you can use the HTML embed just to throw that right in an Elementor page. Now I would say one of the killer features of Elementor Pro is the form builder. So Elementor Pro has this form builder that lets you create forms and connect those forms to different services or even just use it as a, as a basic form that submits its entries to your email address. And I utilize this a lot. I didn't used to use uh, these form builders. I used to use Gravity Forms and I still use Gravity Forms for big elaborate forms. But for smaller forms like this, the Elementor form builder is absolutely fantastic. I can really customize a form and make it look nice and, uh, and style it for something like a landing page. Um, I mean, it's an easy way to build forms just by dragging and dropping them in and then editing and adding sections. I, I, I can add te more text boxes, check boxes, radio selection boxes, drop downs, all sorts of stuff you can do with this particular tool and it's really nice uh, to be able to do that within Elementor, not needing any additional plugins to do that. So I create a form like this. I can select the actions after submit. I can have it collect submissions, which it actually saves those submissions in the website, 
and then have them email them to me and I can connect this form to ConvertKit, MailChimp, a whole slew of different uh, types of tools, which I've talked about in another video on how to connect Elementor to Zapier uh, or even another tool like ConvertKit. So Elementor Pro, in my opinion, comes with more than enough value to what it costs. Um, if you're considering Elementor Pro and you're considering purchasing it, there is a link down in the description below that will take you there. Uh, it's an affiliate link. It doesn't cost anything for you, but it does help support our channel when you make your purchase through that affiliate link because they give us a little bit of that sale and it helps support what we're doing here on the channel. So I highly and greatly appreciate that uh, if you do decide to purchase Elementor Pro. So, you know, it depends on what you really need to achieve on whether or not you need to purchase Elementor Pro. As you can see, there are lots of really neat things that you can do in Elementor without purchasing Pro. So I really recommend that you spend some time with Elementor, just the Elementor plugin itself, and then decide whether or not you need Pro based on what you're trying to achieve. If you're looking to build forms, if you're wanting to build custom headers and footers, if you're wanting to use the ability for to, to create pop-ups or landing pages or templates and stuff like that, then you're going to need Pro. Those are some of the features that come with Pro. I'm not going to dive into everything there. I just wanted to provide my opinion and my thoughts and give you kind of a, a low to mid-level uh, approach on, on whether or not Pro is worth it. And so I hope that I was able to achieve that for you here today. If you have any questions, definitely ask down in the comment section below. I know I couldn't answer every specific thing that Pro comes with here, but you can always go over to the Elementor Pro website using the link in the description below and look at all of the different options that I didn't mention in this video. So if this video is useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel here on the Elementor Pro so you can be notified through YouTube when new videos come out. If you want to get updates from us through our newsletter, which includes the videos, any resources that we came across, and some tips, definitely subscribe to that. The link is in the description below as well. And then if you're just getting started with Elementor, I have a free course for you to check out. That link is in the description below. It is Getting Started with Elementor, and it will help you learn everything that you need to know about using Elementor. But that's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for checking it out, and I hope to see you back in the next one soon. Take care.